is The Ford Show, starring Dinah Shore with Peter Lynn Hayes and Robert Emmett Dolan and his orchestra. And our guest for tonight, Gene Kelly. All presented by the Ford dealers and Lincoln Mercury dealers of America. And here is Dinah Shore. Way down among Brazilians, coffee beans grow by the billion. So they've got to find those extra cups to fill. They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. You can't get cherry soda, cause they've got to sell their quota. And the way things are, I guess they never will. They've got a zillion tons of coffee in Brazil. No tea or tomato juice, you'll see. No potato juice, cause the planters down in Santos all say no, no, no. A politician's daughter was accused of drinking water and was fined a great big $50 bill. They've got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. No tea or tomato juice. No, no, no. So you'll add to the local color, drinking coffee with a crawler. Dunkin' doesn't take a lot of skin. They've got an awful lot of coffee. An awful lot of coffee. An awful lot of coffee in Brazil. Friends, this is Dinah Shore, happy to welcome you to another Wednesday evening Ford show. Still steadfast stands our orchestra leader, Robert Emmett, greatest of the Dolans. Our guest is a fellow who has gone to the top as fast as his wonderful dancing feet could carry him, Gene Kelly. And here, folks, is Peter Lynn Hayes. Hello, Dinah. Hi, Pete. Boy, I still can't get over it. Get over what? What tackles, what blocking, what bone-crushing drives, what disregard for life and limb. Peter, what are you... Oh, you're still talking about Army-Navy on Saturday. No, I'm talking about Bullock's Wilshire today. (laughs) He trapped me. Boy, I'm going to have to buck that department store mob myself. You know, I got a problem in addition to Christmas. George and I are celebrating our anniversary tomorrow. Well, happy days. What are you getting, Mr. Montgomery? That's my problem. I don't know yet. Let's see now. The first anniversary calls for paper, and the next is glass. What is it when you get to the third anniversary? In Hollywood, it's a miracle. (laughs) Oh, come on now, Pete. Really, I'm stuck. What can I get him? I'd like to get George something that he wouldn't ever, ever think of getting for himself. How about a half a dozen Joe Stafford records? Oh, I doubt if you could get George to switch singers. (laughs) He remains loyal to Margaret Whiting. (laughs) I see. What could I get him? Well, has he got a... Oh, he probably has. How about a... (laughs) He must have that. (laughs) Say, what about getting him out... That isn't practical. But you've given me some very good ideas. Glad to help, Dinah. Say, you know, a lot of people have gift problems these days. It wouldn't hurt if we passed out a few hints. Say, Pete, that's a very good idea. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, as a public service, Dinah Shore and I will devote this portion of our evening to... Helpful hints for Christmas shoppers, Peter. <laughs> Hello there, girl, oh, girls, you girls. <laughs> for a gift that is different, why not give him a pair of new monogram socks? Monograms on socks are very attractive, and when he looks under a table, he will always know which feet are his. <laughs> Hello there, fellows. This year, if you want to get the girl of your heart a gift that's a bit different and yet practical and very useful, we suggest a simple sable coat. <laughs> <laughs> fellows, here's an interesting gift for the girl who likes to be seen in the best places. A midriff bathing suit. <laughs> Girls... If your boyfriend already has a fountain pen that writes underwater, you may be interested to know that the same company is now putting out a razor that shaves under ink. (laughs) And girls? Oh, girls, is he a man who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth? 
Then how about giving him a knife and fork to match? <laughs> and, fellows, remember, perfume is always welcomed by her. For a different, lovely perfume, we suggest the new scent called Don't. Don't is exquisitely potent. The slogan on the bottle reads, when he smells don't, he does. <laughs> and now, fellows, for that most difficult of gifts, what to get the girl who has everything. We suggest nothing. <laughs> Say, you know, Dinah, it mm -hmm. just occurred to me, your present for George is really all set. It's that song you're about to sing. That's a lovely thought, Peter. For George, the anniversary waltz. Oh, how we danced on the night. We were wed, we vowed our true love, though a word wasn't said, the world was in blue. When you're shopping these days, it's very difficult to get everything you want. But here's a suggestion on how to get not only everything you want, but more of it. More of everything you want with mercury. More of everything you want with mercury. Yes, that's right. Mercury definitely gives you more of everything you want. More beauty. What sleek, graceful beauty. Flowing, low-slung lines. Colorful, two-tone interiors. Mercury has a smart, modern look you like more every time you see it. More pick up and go. Mercury's always been famous for its lively pickup and power that makes driving anywhere more fun. More comfort. What a smooth, gliding, cradled ride. And you can stretch out and really relax in a Mercury. It's so roomy. More economy. Yes, for such a big car, Mercury costs amazingly little to operate. From every angle, you get more with Mercury. More beauty, more comfort, more performance, more economy. Stop in your neighborhood Lincoln and Mercury dealer. See for yourself... Why so many men and women are saying... More of everything you want with Mercury. More of everything you want with Mercury. The boat rides we would take The moonlight on the lake The way we danced And hummed our favorite song The things we did last summer I'll remember all went along The midway and the fun the Cupid dolls we won, the bell you rang to prove that you were strong, the things we did last summer, 
I remember all winter long The early morning hike The rented tandem bike The lunches that we used to pack We never could explain That sudden summer rain The looks we got when we got back The leaves began to fall Like promises we made How could a love That seemed so right go on The things we did last summer guest star tonight, there's very little I can say that you don't already know. He's a fellow who's dancing and acting, have placed him among those who, oh, I'm too close a friend of his to go on like this. After all, has anybody here not seen Kelly? Hiya, Dinah. Hello, Jean. Gee, I hope you didn't mind that informal introduction. Oh, it's all right, Dinah. Oh, you do mind. Gee, Jean, I'm no, sorry. No, it's I... all right, Dinah. I didn't mind. Not at all. Of course, I bet you John's wife gets a bigger build-up from his other wife, but uh, <laughs> it's all right, Dinah. Are you sure, Gene? Uh, no, I can... Of course it's all right. I didn't mind, but uh, I bet Coca-Cola gets a bigger build-up in Brazil. <laughs> Oh, gee, Gina, I'm sorry. I'm convinced I was wrong. And to make up for it, I'm going to give you one of those super special guest star interviews that they do on the air. No, forget it, Dinah, please. No, 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 Gina, I no, want to... No, Dinah. Yes, Gina. No, Dinah. Oh, well, all right then. We won't. Well, if you insist. <laughs> okay, then, here we go. Big star type interview. Well, 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 if it isn't that star of stage and screen, Mr. Gene Kelly. Applause, applause, applause. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Shaw. Thank you. Hello, all my devoted fans out there. Hi. Oh. Hello, Mr. Kelly. Now tell us, Mr. Kelly, how are you? How here you are dancing in so many, many pictures and acting so, so magnificently. How do you account for your great and versatile ability? Well, Dan, I'm not conceited. I believe the true credit must go to the Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> Wonderful of you, Jean, but most stars usually forget their old cereals. <laughs> uh, tell me, by the way, Mr. Kelly, uh, tell me about your next production. What kind of picture is it? Moving. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I see. I understand uh, the leading lady is Marie McDonald. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just a moment, Marie McDonald. Break up this interview. This I must hear about. Hey, what's with you, Peter? Oh, Pete's evidently heard that Marie is known as the body. Yes, indeed, sure. Everyone calls her the body. Say, Gene, tell me, why do they? Peter, you're joking, of course. You know why they call her the body. <laughs> sure, but I'd love to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> Really sensational, huh, Gene? Well, the way I feel about Peter, it, it, it's this, Peter. After making a picture with Sinatra, it's a pleasure to be working with any kind of a body. <laughs> hey, Frankie, hey, I'm only kidding, hey. You know, really, Frank's a fine actor. I know, I understand he almost got the title role in The Razor's Edge. <laughs> hey, 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 Frankie, hey, we're still kidding, hey. Gene, you know, I'll never forget you and Frank and Anchors Away, especially that wonderful dance you did with the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Gene, that little mouse was really cute. Say, Peter, you sound just like him. Oh, that little mouse had me worried for a while. You know, the studio kept asking me to make another picture with him, and for a while it looked like they were going to make a team out of us. Instead of Astaire and Rogers, it was going to be Kelly and the mouse. <laughs> Oh, Gene, come on now. You can't... Listen, Dinah, you think I'm kidding, but I got the fright of my life when I found out they were thinking of making a musical version of, of Mice and Men. <laughs> With the mouse getting top billing, too. 
Say, no. listen, Gene, I think the dance was a wonderful idea. Who thought of it? Well, Dinah, the idea came from a true story. And that's another reason I was afraid of getting too involved with that mouse. Now, if you're interested, there's a real yarn here. It all started with a pair of vaudeville hoofers. Gather round, kiddies, and listen to the story of the hoofers and the mouse. Hiya, folks. You probably don't remember me. Well, me and a wife done a vaudeville dance act for years. Gina Diner, the hoofers. Ten minutes of devastating wit and terpsichord. Ah, great act. Well, it wasn't bad. Hey, uh, Dinah. Yes, Gene? You know it feels like circus weather? Well, why does it feel like circus weather? Because the heat's intense. Oh. <laughs> Say, Dinah. Yes, Gene? You know how to get down from an elephant? No, Gene. How do you get down from an elephant? <laughs> you can't get down from an elephant. You have to get down from a duck. <laughs> Well, it wasn't no Shakespeare, but Dinah and me was in love. And after the act, we would walk arm in arm to our dressing room. Now, you listen to me, you road company Gene Kelly. If you step on my foot once more during that last routine, I'll fracture you. My dear Miss Two Left Feet, it is not no fault of mine if you dance like you was pressing out grapes. Wait! I got all the talent in this act. Who does everybody look at on a stage? Me. You. Me. They watch me. You. They keep their eyes on me, not you. Oh, yeah? Who gets hit with more eggs? <laughs> Ah, uh, look, Gene. You know, the only reason we're fighting is because starting tonight we're out of work again. Yeah, and we're busted and we ain't going to eat for a while and we got all... Help! The... Help! Hey, what's the matter? Look, look, a mouse. A mouse in our dressing room. Good. Ask him, can he let us have a piece of cheese till next Tuesday? Oh, oh get him away quick. What's wrong with you? It's only a little mouse. Sure. <laughs> Hey, I'm only a harmless little mouse. You see, he says to himself, he's only... Ha <laughs> hey, that mouse talked. Yeah, that mouse talked. A mouse talking in a dressing room. What's the matter, you people superstitious? Well, I'll be ding-dang, blinkety-blank. Careful with that language, bud. I'm an ex-church mouse. <laughs> oh, look, mouse. How can a mouse talk? I never seen a mouse that could talk. Well, after all, bud, how many mice do you know? Hey... By the way, permit me to introduce myself. My name's Peter. How do you do? Uh, uh, gee, can can all mice talk? Only the ones in my family. <laughs> you see, Grandma eloped with a guinea pig from Harvard. A mouse talk. A rodent. Hey, hey, now look, I got a proposition for you two. I'd like to join your act. Mm. I've dabbled in show business. I did one picture. What picture? The mouse on 92nd Street. <laughs> now, about joining your act, I can help you, you see. I dance a little and, uh, I, uh... Well, he joins us. We doll him up in a little full-dress suit and teach him to sing a song we write for him called Top Hat, White Cheese, and Tails. Well, finally we're ready to open. So he puts him on a little platform on the stage, get him up there, and go into our act. First, I do a fast step. Then Dinah does a step. Then Petey the Mouse. <laughs> he was still pretty clumsy. <laughs> well, we finished the act to a pretty big hand, and the next day... Hey, Gene, look. The act is reviewed in Variety. Quick, quick, read it. If Variety likes us, we're in. Okay, let me see now. New act review. Gene, Dinah, and Petey. Male dancer, female dancer, and Mouse. This act in its opening yesterday did only fair. Jean and Dinah did pretty well, but Mouse needs more rehearsal. Signed, Abel. That's tough. Ah, oh, relax, Jean. Don't let him scare you. What are you, a mouse or a man? Well, Variety was a onerous because in 30 days, Petey the Mouse was a smash hit. You know, this is the year of the yearling. Well, that was the month of the mousling. <laughs> well, Petey was a sensational hit, and of course, it begins to go to his head. He gets pretty cocky. I remember one day in a hotel in Cleveland when he gets on the phone. There! There! Hello, operator! Operator! Give me the manager! Hello, manager! 
there's a man in my room. <laughs> yeah, Petey was changing all right. He wasn't no mousy little mouse no more. He was getting his picture in the papers. Life frights him up. He poses for an ad as Mouse of Distinction. And then one day... Hey, Gene. Gene, I got something to tell you. What's wrong? Gene, Petey the Mouse has walked out huh? of... Huh? Yeah, he's gone off and left us flat. How do you like that? Petey the Mouse. A louse. <laughs> Didn't he at least leave a note? Ah, don't be silly. Who ever heard of a mouse that could write? After all we did for that mouse, the rat. And us picking him out of a hole in a wall. <laughs> Well, we try to find him. We call the police and all the exterminators. But no use. He disappeared. Then, one day, we found out. Petey had gone to Hollywood. He was rich and famous, and he still is. And I'm here to vouch for that. Petey has eaten a lot. He's put on a lot of weight, got big and fat. And they got him a toupee. A great big toupee. A big blonde one. Gene, I bet people would like to know who Petey turned out to be. Well, folks... Petey the Mouse today is none other than... Well, this may come as a shock to you, but sometime, take a look at Lassie with his hair off. To get back to the subject of human beings, here's a lovely song lots of people have been asking us to do again, just as we did it on our latest Columbia release. You'll always be the one I love Every hour, every day, every year You'll always be the one I love My heart will feel the same old glow Even though the stars may fade from above I promise there will be no other arms for me take you to New York, where the noted editor and commentator, Mr. Henry LaCosset, is waiting to speak to you. Okay, New York and Mr. LaCosset. Thank you, Mr. LaCosset. Sunshine heading my way. Zip 
zippity doo zippity a Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. It's the truth, it's actual, everything is satisfactory. zippity doo da, zippity a wonderful feeling, wonderful day. again next Wednesday evening, and our guest will be Mr. Show Business himself, the mighty Eddie Cantor. Kelly appeared through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor Picture, The Yearling. Be with us again next Wednesday night when the Ford dealers and Lincoln Mercury dealers of America again bring you Dinah Shore with Peter Lynn Hayes and Robert Emmett Dolan and his orchestra. Our guest will be Eddie Cantor. More than one million young Americans have volunteered for our new regular army since last fall. This is a great record, but we must better it since nearly half of the men now in service will be discharged during the coming year. Now this new regular army which America is building is a compact, carefully chosen force of skilled technicians. But young men who seek to enter the army today must have brains and ability. You must be capable of leadership. You must be all this because the stakes are high in the task before you. The maintenance of the peace and security for which thousands of other young Americans have already died. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.